<laughs> Get high, rapper. The man hour. You already know. It's live. It's raw. It's going down. Like this. I'm going around and letting everybody know that they welcome to the show. Yep. It's the latest thing you ever seen, you already know. Yep. Let me introduce you to your host of the hour. It be Mike and Mike. Mike and Mike. Yeah, it's the man hour. Yep. Got the hottest plays, uh, all the breaking news. Yeah. Every rumor, every trade, every breaking bruise. Mm -hmm. Tighten up the screws. Yeah, it's going down. Have you saying what the fuck? They never watered down. Ooh. It's going down. I'll be rolling up. Yep. And if you buy it or you sell it, then you made the cut. Watch you flip it back. I can double up. I got some ratchet for that ass. I'ma burn it up. Gotta check the rules and know that it be fair foul. Rap blow the whistle, coach throw the towel. We can do this on the field or outside the lines. It's the man now and no, now we going live. Haha, <laughs> what is up? This is Michael Buckheister with my man Mike Blah with the Mike and Mike Man Hour coming on to you live on our Facebook page 10 p.m. East Coast time, 11 p.m. East Coast time. But as always, Mike, how was your day, man? My day was great. I had a great day, man. I had a great, great day. Um, I worked like a, like a dog today, but, you know, those are good problems to have, right? When you have to... Uh, exactly. So I'm, I'm getting to the point now where I have to, like, have to hire some more people because it's uh, where I'm getting too busy. So, but... Those are always good problems to have, right? So yeah, I'm gonna those, have to hire. Those are people. always excellent problems to have. But you want to know a problem that is not good to have? That bald ass head of yours. Bald ass head of mine, yeah. But a cracked windshield, man. So I, I, I was following a truck on the way to work, full of like, um, I don't know, like pea, like pea gravel. You know, just like, just like the little small, like the like the small gravel, like you lay like underneath a pool or like or something. I believe it's called right. pea, like pea. Pea, pea gravel. Well, they hit a bump and some rocks can come, come, come like flying out. Usually, no big deal whatsoever, but there was a big old one. I'm, I'm talking, you know, like a baseball size. Boom, right on the windshield. Crack that thing, and you know, it, it is almost like a hailstone crack. So, like, it, so it's it's not crack, cracked all the way across, but it's but it's it is starting to to like spider crack, right? And my and my people for over at Safe Life, man, they drove over to my job. Put, put put some glue stuff in there. I can't even tell it was there, man. Like, it is awesome. You know, I've always heard about that. <clears throat> and I've always been, like, real, like, uh, how long is this going to last type thing? You know right? what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so you, it's worth it? You think it's worth it? I mean, uh, I mean, honestly, my insurance paid for it. Um, But if I didn't have car insurance, it would have only cost me, like, 50, 60 bucks, which is cheaper Still, than a $300 yeah. new, like a new shield, right? So, yeah, I mean, even I, if it lasts almost... for a couple years, I mean, that still saves me that much money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, and it's, and it's on our Camry, which is officially paid off. So, we all know what it means when you pay off a car. It is about to bite the shit, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what is going to happen. <laughs> but, I mean, that, that is just, that is just my luck. But, my, man, Mike, I am glad your business is succeeding. I'm doing great hey, in my in my life. I mean, ever great. since we started hang, hanging out and talking to each other, like, every night, like, every yeah. day, I mean, we've been going up and up and up. Only I know, if, man. You, only it, if it's, we were Super Bowl fans. I know, I know right? Um, I think it's just, you know, you surround yourself with the people who, who want to win, you know, in life. Right. You know what I mean? I think that's really what it what it's about is – like you just want to surround your people or surround yourself with those who like, hey, I'm going to push you and you're going to push me. You know what I mean? Those are like the kind of people I surround myself with, especially like my my two best friends here in Austin, man, Dub J and BJ. Like we're three men that uplift each other and like push each other to be great. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, like I've always been told that you want to surround yourself that people that you want to reach up to and want to be 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 you know surround yourself with successful people um if people are consistently doing that how would they bring non-successful people into their circle like do you think that they like see like see see like a drive see like you know something you know like hey this guy might have the it factor let's go ahead and let yeah him i mean like, i think no for sure whenever you bring somebody into your life or into your circle right i mean it's always 
you're filling each other out. But I mean, right. if you get that sense of that person, you know what I mean? Then it's kind of where you just, you want to push them to be great. And anybody that I come across, you know, that comes into our circle, like I'm automatically like trying to push them to be great, trying to push them to do like, reach their full potential you know what i mean because i don't i don't ever want anybody to not be successful you know what i mean right. i want people to i want people to to be uplifted and i want you to be successful is you know have everything that you want in life yeah like the like the like the reason why i like i asked you that is because like i've been approached by some people saying that hey i want to start a podcast you know hey we're looking up to you guys what do you guys do that are so like so special I'm like i like and I'm like we don't do anything special we're just who we're just who we are you know like me and you click real well ever since the first day that we talked on a pop podcast it was easy peasy and like we simply grew and just like it is just it, it, like we're giving you guys free advice here just just be you you know i mean like obviously you have to buy some equipment that's you know kind of professional like you can't be talking on talking on your phone like i mean that's just crap at the at the at the end of the day and also, you know, just be yourself. Have a personality. I, I think have the most personality, like Eric, because like, like, let, let, like, let's be honest. This face does not do TV, uh, and <laughs> that is how I got. I, that that is how I got got my. You know, wife. but you might as well <laughs> go ahead and tell him. You might as well go. That's why you brought me on the show. You needed to bring some sexy onto the yeah, show. Yeah, um, as they say, sex sells, and uh, I got the personality. Mike has a sex appeal. So, I mean, you put two of us to. Together, we are a freaking supermodel, man, right? <laughs> freaking amazing. But, guys, speaking of what amazing. What are you drinking on tonight? I, I, I am a Bud Light guy. So, me, personally, okay. um, I like Bud Light, and that's just what I drink. Now, now, so Cindy's I, a whiskey. She is straight Jack or Jim Bean. She's whiskey girl. I got hit up um, in, in one of my private, or, uh, on my DM, I guess that's what the kids say, right? They slid like into my DMs. DMs. Um, no, somebody messaged me on, off of Facebook and was like, Hey man, like I watch the show all the time and I always see you drinking some kind of whiskey. He was asking me what I drink. Right. So for all of you out there who wonder what the hell I'm drinking, it's either, uh, Jameson black barrel or good old bullet rye. I've never heard of Billy Rye. Oh dude. Bullet rye is, Oh dude, this is amazing. If you you should go buy a bottle for Cindy, and I guarantee we need you a whiskey sponsor. That's who we, we need. need. Yes, we need a whiskey sponsor. Please send I me some in free freaking whiskey. whiskey row, and we don't have a whiskey sponsor. What is up with that? Yeah, but Mike, I'm gonna need you to get on that so they can send me some free whiskey. I'll promote that whiskey the whole time I'm on the show. I got I got a little tickle in my throat. I might be calling sick into work tomorrow and head down to whiskey <laughs> row and get us a sponsorship. But uh, but if you guys are new here, welcome to the page. Be sure to like it because we're giving away a hundred dollar Amazon gift card. How do you get entered? You ask. Simply like our Facebook page. We are giving away a, a entry per per items that you do. You like the page? That is one entry. You invite somebody to the page to like it. That's two entries. So right there, you like it and you invite somebody to the page. That's three entries. Then what do you gotta do? Become a top fan. How do you become a top fan? You interact with us in the like in the chat. You know, you jump in there. That is five entries. Once you hit the top, like the top fam, Mark, that's five entries. And then the big, easy, big daddy of them all, the easiest, share the freaking live stream. You share that there 10 times. Go. That is 10 entries per time. So you share it once. You like the page. You invite a friend. And you become a top fan. That's 20 entries right there. Didn't have to do anything but simply hit the like button, hit the share buttons. We're giving away Amazon gift card for every 500 likes that we give away. That we get on our Facebook page right now, Mike. I think we're sending about two sixty, two seventy. So we are over yeah, halfway I mean, we there. Just, unless, unless yeah, I mean, week. we just what well, we just launched our page Sunday, Monday, yeah, something like our, that. Our first so, live show was uh, July fifth. So yeah, I mean three, that's three days in. Good. Three days in at two sixty is pretty good. Yeah. So guys, we are doing something right over here. But Mike, we are going to bring in a new game show tonight and it's going to be called uh, fact here we go rap so after the break we're going to go I, i'm going to read you off some sports stories and i'm going to you know we're basically just going to pick your mind if it's if it's fact you say yeah this is fact because of this this and this and if it's crap you tell me it is this this and this and then after that Dak prescott gets offered a deal do the cowboys what are they smoking over there in dallas land 
But guys, we're going to take. I, a I don't know if break. they offered him a new deal or what, if it's the current Cowboys offer. I don't know. We'll talk about it after the break, though. We will definitely talk about that Dak Prescott at the bottom half half of the hour. But coming on the other side of the break, factor crack with my man, like my blog, guys. This is Mike and Mike Man Hour on the RTF Sports Network. We'll be right back. And guys, welcome back to the Mike and Mike Man Hour. This is Michael Buckheiser with my man, Mike LeBlanc. And Mike, it is that special time of night. We don't have the jingle yet quite mastered down like like our like our sound guy Peasy. He 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 hurt his back today. He uh, oh, um, I I officially called him an old man because you know when you get out of bed and you hit, and you feel that back and you gotta like call and take to work because you hurt your back. You are officially an old like old man. So Peasy, you are an old old man. So. Minus the sound effects to, to Mike, we are going to play that game called Fact or Crap. So we'll, we'll just go ahead and do the uh, applause or the – you want applause or a rim shop? Hmm. Let's do applause for fact, and if it's crap, we'll do the rim shot. All righty. There we go. There we go. <laughs> All right, guys. So fact or crap here, Mike, the first fact or crap of the night. You're really going to test my sports intelligence right now, aren't you? Uh, yeah, because I, I didn't prep you for this at all. Cam mm-hmm. Newton and the New England Patriots are AFC Super Bowl locks with Cam Newton starting week one. Fact or crap? Hmm. Crap. Why is that? Mm-mm. No, they're not a lock for the AFC championship game. Not at all. Um, You've got to get past the Kansas City Chiefs. You're going to have to get past the Indianapolis Colts. You're going to have to get past the Baltimore Ravens. Um, I, so, no, I've got I've got Kansas City and Baltimore in the AFC Championship next, next season. So, yeah, no, they are definitely not a lot. Do they have a better chance? 100%. I think they have a better chance of getting past um, Baltimore and Kansas City with Cam Newton, but not a lot. Crap. You threw out a team in there that I was kind of surprised. You said Indianapolis Colts. Mm-hmm. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, you had them going ten and six. If I'm not mistaken, and I do, uh, and I have them winning, making the playoffs, winning the division. Yeah, and I have them making the playoffs, sir. You, so you think the Indianapolis Colts right now are better than the Cam Newton and the New England Patriots with Cam Newton starting not as a backup? <sighs> Um, yeah, given the, uh, given the off season, um, Cam Newton hasn't played in what, three years now, like a full season. He hasn't played a full season in three years. Um, and you have, um, you have, uh, damn it. My mind just drew a blank. Philip Rivers. Rivers. Yeah. You got Philip Rivers over there in, uh, in Indian with the Colts with something to prove. Exactly. With something to prove. And He's played the last three years, so I think very, that gives very, very advantage. good too. Yes, very well. So I give, I, I give the, I give the edge to the Colts over, over the, uh, over the Patriots for sure. Okay, so the next fact or crap: the San Francisco 49ers did lose a Super Bowl. That is a fact. This year yep. they will miss the playoffs. Fact or crap? Crap. Um, I don't think they will miss the playoffs. They're one of the better NFC teams. Um, I mean, you, you're you're gonna have um, you're gonna have the the Packers, the Bucks, Seattle Seahawks, the Saints, definitely the Forty uh, ers and I think you're gonna have uh, the Philadelphia Eagles in the playoffs from the NFC. Hmm. I do not have Dallas going to the playoffs again. This season, this is a Cowboys fan speaking that don't have the Cowboys going to the playoffs. I mean, I I do think the 49ers are going to make it to the playoffs. They are going to sneak in. The only thing that is going to make them or allow them to sneak in is the fact that we have seven playoff teams this year. If we were down at six two, they would probably be out. So the Super Bowl hang hang hangover is a real deal, unfortunately. So San Francisco 49ers, they better step up their game and hopefully, 
they better be praying that AB does not go to see Seattle because then they'll be really, really screwed. Next up on the fact or crap list here, the Ivy League has officially canceled all fall, fall, fall sports. They're moving football to spring. Fact or crap that the other <laughs> Power Five conferences will move football to spring and follow suit. Are you talking about powerhouses like in the Big 12, Big 10, Pac-10? Power 10? Five, so yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, no, I think that's a fact. Um, just because, um, early in, you know, I think it was what Monday or it, Sunday when everybody couldn't right. hear me. Um, I think we are not going to have a college football season that's going to start on time because they are so worried about student safety, okay. not athlete safety, student body, right? Because at the end of the day, yes. While sports do bring in money, it's really about going there to get an education, right? So I do think uh, a lot of power conferences will start following suit and pushing the season back to the spring because it will still give the NFL – and I think the NFL draft gets pushed back a little bit too right. with this happening. Um, they'll let them play out their season. Um, and I think you, you'll, you'll start to see – Stories coming out that we'll probably have the season starting and right after the Super Bowl, and then the draft. That still gives you know a, a big gap between the Super Bowl and the draft to actually right. play the season. And that way, NFL scouts will be able to evaluate talent and everything. We won't miss a beat, hopefully. Yeah. So I, uh, I, I don't know if if I was talking to some, somebody or I read this, but uh, this is not coming from me whatsoever. This is this is coming from an outside source. They said if the NFL season does say the say, say the college football season does get pushed back to the spring or the NFL season gets pushed back like a month or two like as well, they will in return bump the twenty one season back as well, just so there's adequate time to compare to re, like you know be at, have an off season and then the and then the twenty twenty two season would would be back on track somehow some way. Which, which I think they would have to do that, especially if college football does move to the spring. Now, with that being said, we are going to see the power of the NFL in the upcoming weeks because I believe the Power Five conferences are meeting uh, this week or next week to to decide if they're going to have a season or not, push it back, etc. Now, if the NFL says we are starting uh, sep- sep- on September 10th, Houston Texans versus Kansas City Chiefs, and we aren't going to uh, deviate from that whatsoever. I think we're going to see college football follow suit, like as well, because the because college football does not want their athletes to sit out spring ball to get prepared for the draft to get prepared for the NFL. Because as of right now, the NFL draft is in April. The Ivy League is moving their football season from April first till mid May. Right, so that is in the middle of college football season. If it got moved to the spring, if the NFL season does not deviate from their start date, college you know, football has to follow suit. It's it's going to go off of the Power Five. It's not going to go off the Ivy League schools because let's be honest, not a lot of prospects come from those schools. Right, the prospects come from those those Power Five conferences. And the difference so, between the Power Five and the Ivy League, the Ivy League doesn't really play outside of their conference. They just play a lot of interconference games. Yes, they have a couple like. Navy or Air Force games, which, you know, kind of doesn't matter. They'll cancel those. So the Ivy League is kind of like their own entity. So let's go ahead and move on to the next next, next one here. We're going to stay in college football here, but fact or crap, Ohio State has come out and said that they are going to play football with or without the NCAA. If the NCAA says that you have to move the football to the spring season, mm-hmm. Are you? Are we going to see the beginning of the end of the NCAA football and Power Five conferences leaving that and making their own entity? Yes, one hundred percent. That is fact, and I hope to happen. The NCAA needs to go away. Yeah. They really do. Um, I don't. I don't like anything about the NCAA. Like it. It. It's got to go away. These power five conferences, I think, could come together and create their own entity. And then once I once that comes together, I think we see a true playoff system like we see in the NFL. People start dividing shit into divisions and they structure it like the NFL because I know all of them are tired of hearing 
well, we should have been champions. We went undefeated. How come we didn't get to play for the national championship? UCF. How many times do we hear that every year, though? Right. You know what I mean? So I think, yeah, I I would I would love it if they did that. Yeah. Because I know Power 5 schools are wanting a true playoff system in the first place. Yeah, I mean, it is. it could be easy peasy. You take the commissioners from the top five power con- 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 conferences – Vote for one, you know, big commissioner. The other four are like his understudies. You, you, you basically combine all five power conferences in, in, into one, you know, NFL junior, if you want to say. And then you, like, you have the NFL junior East. You have the NFL junior West. You know, I mean, I mean, I guess the conferences will will will, will, will st- go still kind of be the same. But you have a NFC East. You have an NFC West. Like, like you have. Eight different divisions, just like the NFL. Let's 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 be honest. The NCAA is only there to quote regulate, you know, re- re- recruiting re- restrictions and make make sure they're not making money. Yada yada yada. Well, the state of California has already said, you know what, college players, you can make money off of your likeness. You can have a YouTube channel. You can have this. You can have that. Now the now the NCAA is kind of pat on their their like feet like how can we regulate this like how can we do this the ncaa is a billion dollar company but yet these kids are eating ramen noodles uh, day in and day out because they can't 100 percent. and i think a lot of the power five conferences want to let their their players get paid while they're in school why not right i mean why, you have why a coach should i making if, five six million dollars a year yeah and if, kid's you're, not getting if you're my quarterback if you're my if you're let's just say i'm gonna use texas you're the quarterback of texas sam ellinger Right. As long as you show up on time, you give me one hundred and fifty percent and you show up on Saturday and we go out and win some damn ball games. You know what? If you want to take 20, 30 minutes out of your day to hop on YouTube to make some money, by all means, go do it. Yeah. So uh, uh, so to revert back to the previous statement here, I like I asked you if, if the power of five is going to move their football to spring. I'm going to say if the NCAA says they have to, goodbye Ohio State, goodbye Notre Dame, goodbye Kansas, goodbye Texas. All Texas, those schools are, yeah, are, are like because schools. because the next factor crap here is Stanford. They are cutting 11 varsity sports because they are afraid that they're not going to have a football season. That is how important football is. The next, the next question is factor crap. If college football season does not happen – other schools are going to follow suit. They're going to cut all varsity sports, and we aren't going to have college football the way we used to have it. Fact or crap? Fact. I mean, I use Texas a lot as a, and as an example because I know Texas. But I mean, Texas makes you know seven, eight hundred million dollars a season. Easy, easy. You know what I mean? And it, it's probably a billion. You know what I mean? Maybe not that much, but the easy seven, eight hundred million dollars a season, and that seven, eight hundred million dollars a season funds baseball, basketball, girls volleyball, golf, track, every sport that Texas has. Damn fencing, swimming, all those sports are funded by what's made off of college football. So, yeah, man, you if we don't have a college football season. I think we're going to see a lot of – I think it will affect baseball next, college baseball, because they won't have the money to fund the baseball team. Okay, so moving on to the next factor crap. With the NBA season starting to get ready to ramp up and whatnot, I read an article today saying that the 2010 to 2014 LeBron James and the Miami Heat were the most overrated NBA team in history. They only won two titles out of the four years that LeBron James was there. Was that 2010 to 2014 Miami Heat team the most overrated team in the NBA? Fact or crap? Fact. If you're if if you're that talented on your team, you should have took it all four years. Michael Jordan did. No, he didn't. He won three. Now and he won. Three. I was like, oh, I'm talking. And- no, I thought he won. I thought Jordan won four titles. Uh, he like he won six, ninety two to ninety five or whatever it was. He took the year off to play baseball. Or sorry, ninety two to ninety four. You know, so the ninety two, ninety three, ninety four season took nine right. ninety five off, and then won ninety six, ninety seven, ninety eight. Yeah, 
I mean, Jordan did it. Now, granted, yes, he had like Pippen and right. um, Rodman and all that, but the Bulls were hyped up, but they lived up to the hype. The The Miami Heat didn't. So let me kind of be devil's advocate here. Did or did not Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan play a couple years before they started winning all those championships? I think if that Miami Heat team would have stayed together, Chris Bosh wouldn't have wouldn't have been diagnosed with that heart condition. I, I, don't, I don't remember what, exactly what the heart con- condition was, but he wasn't cleared to come cleared to play. Uh, it was Dwayne a broken Wade heart because healthy. I mean, it was a broken heart because LeBron <laughs> made him leave. I believe Bosch is still actually signed with the Miami. He 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 just like an inactive player. No, there was but, a whole thing between Chris Bosch and LeBron. Well, it's just whatever. Let's not get into politics here. But I think if they would have stayed together for more than four years, they could have won three three in a row. They could have won six in a row. Honestly, I mean, you had a year to play, and then you won, and then you lost, and then you won. Why didn't you win that middle one then? Uh, because the Mavericks were that freaking good. Well, actually, they, I mean, but you're LeBron. You're the goat. Is LeBron goat to go? Here, like, like, no, like, he's what, not. Here we, no. here, 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 no. here, here we go. Factor crap. LeBron James is the greatest basketball player in the NBA. In the NBA right now? Uh, yeah. Uh, because the only players that he faced in the NBA Finals that are not in the NBA now is Dirk Nowitzki. He he retired last last year, if if I'm not mistaken. You know, a top player. And then I'll give you that. I, I I'll give you. He's he's number one. I like, am of all one. time. No way. Crap. He's Who is not your number one basketball player of all time? Michael Jordan. Is he? Him or Kareem Abdul Jabbar? What's his real name? Kareem Abdul Jabbar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just. I'm. I, 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 Larry Bird's got to be up there, right? I mean, he's in the top ten for sure. So, uh, the the next factor crap. I, like I I gotta ask you this, like this, like this, this, this question. Did you read the Stephen Jackson Instagram post when he highlighted the Hitler thing? Right. Man, I did. It was Deshaun Jackson. So factor crap. Deshaun Jackson is actually sorry for his post that he posted on Instagram. Crap, no, he's not sorry. He wouldn't have posted it in the first place. Right, so I was on a show, and uh, they were talking. I'm on and off the field with Dylan and, and, like, Durf there. Did you know Durf is just Fred backwards, and Fred's his real, his real name? They call him Durf. That's, really? Yeah, that's that's that, that's kind of weird, like, isn't it? What's up, Steven? What's up, Jameson? I see you guys in the chat there. So the reason why this is crap, that, De, that Deshaun Watson is not sorry, because he took time to highlight – well, okay – he took a five step process here. One, he exactly. found the article wrote by Hitler, by by Hitler. Exactly. He took two, and you can't tell he me he didn't time to know highlight it, was it. Written by Hitler. Right. Two, he took time to highlight it. Right. Yeah. Three, he took time to take a picture of it. Right. Four, he took time to open up his Instagram, push the plus button, import the picture, write a caption. Five, he hit the next button and said, "Are you sure you want to publish this, Deshaun Jackson? Are you sure?" He took a five-step process to get that posted on Instagram. He is not sorry. Come he's on, He's not man. sorry one bit. No, he's <laughs> not sorry. Holy crap. He's, he's not, not sorry. No. Not one bit. He's not sorry one the bit. The only reason why he is sorry is because he is saving face. He does not want to be the next Riley Cooper on like on, like on that team. If you guys remember who Riley Cooper is, he is the guy that got filmed saying the N-word like three years prior, and then the video posted, and they're like, oh, you can't say the N word. And then, funny story, on the Philadelphia Eagle calendar, he was on the cover of the Black History Month, which is which is kind of funny. Ha ha, funny. Uh, actually, kind of he he funny. But <laughs> yeah. Deshaun Jackson, you are not sorry, man. You are not sorry. Jesus. No. <laughs> I, do you think you should be cut? Um. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, people do stupid stuff like all like all the time. I mean, I mean like no, they, no, they 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 do. But bro, you're. You're quoting fucking Hitler. Yeah, but I mean, I mean um, this this is not just like just anybody. Like you're quoting someone that created genocide of the Jews. You created some you like you th- that man was a monster, bro. 
like pure fucking evil and you right. quote him in a time in a time that you know you have a platform and what's going on in our country you do that <laughs> come yeah. on man uh, i he, think you should be cut yeah I mean sometimes i wonder should players really get cut for off the field conduct we have to take a take a quick break so on the other side of the break Let's 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 get into that. Let's let's have a little debate back and forth. Kind of talk about that. Kind of have a fly seat of the pants debate live on Uncut Sports Talk here on Mike and Mike Man Hour here on the RTF Sports Network. Guys, we'll be right back. All right, guys, welcome back to the Mike and Mike Man Hour. We are live on the RTS Sports Network Facebook page right here on the Mike and Mike Man Hour page as well. We are giving away a $100 Amazon gift card. All you guys do is share the content, like our page, and invite some friends to our Tash Talk groups, and you'll be entered to win the $100 Amazon gift card once we hit the 500 like mark on the Facebook page. There you go. So hold on, hold on. But Jameson said, remember when Kaepernick wore a Castro shirt. Yes. Jameson, you can't compare... And by no by no means, Jameson, you know how I feel about Kaepernick, but you can by no means compare Fidel Castro to Hitler. But, but the context is there. <laughs> Colin Kaepernick wore a Castro shirt to a Miami Dolphin tryout where 80% of the population in Miami is uh, Cuban. I, I get it. I get it. Right. But Castro didn't kill over 3 million Jews. Are three million Haitians? Well, just because there's not three million people in Cuba, right? I mean, I'm just <laughs> saying, our Cuba. Sorry, um, yeah, no, I, Cuba, no, Haitian, dude. Yeah. Like, and and the way, like, ah, no, dude. Like, think about the concentration camps and all that. Like, no, Hitler is a monster. He was everything that's wrong with a person. So, yeah, dude. Like that kind of off the field. Think about this. Let me ask you a question, Buck. Yeah, you're you're uh. Your job knows you have a social media, right? Yeah. So what if they went on there and you quoted Hitler? What do you think your job would do? Um, you know, I will tell you exactly what what they would do. I would get an ethics training because we have a transgender person at our work, and I referred to him as a him, and he's actually a her, and he wanted to be called them or some shit like, shit like that. I'm like, no, it's a he or she, and you are a he. You have a dick. But – I got some ethics training and had to like, you know, hey, I'm sorry, whatever, you yada, yada, yada. So uh, me me now, if I think if I was like the face of the company, you know, like the COO or the CE or the CIO or something, they would they would probably have to set an example, s- suspend me or, you know. Hell no, you're getting fired. If you're the face of the company like that, you're getting right. fired. Ju- you're done. Uh, yeah, so just so, like. So let me, let me ask you a question. Because I'm, go- I'm going somewhere with this. Okay. Right? Any any place like that where you have a platform at your job with your employees and people know who you are at work. Right. You're getting fired. Yeah. Uh, much so, like Papa John here in Louisville, Con- Louisville Kentucky. Uh, he was doing so, an ethics training. <laughs> it's funny because he was doing ethics ethics training and they forced him to say the N-word. And it was, and it was, and it was recorded. And he, and he was the owner of the company. He started the company and they had to let him go. They're like, hey, you need to leave. Like, yeah, exactly. Right. So we put NFL players, we put sports figures on such a high pedestal and right. under a microscope, right? Right. So if someone of power in a company or someone that, you know, is let's just say a manager, supervisor and above, those that's probably where you're going to get fired right. for doing something like that, right? Why is it okay for companies to fire people like that, but we can't hold those athletes to the same standard? Wow. I'm not. I'm not going to debate that, be, because I think I agree with you. Like I'm kind of in the gray area. Like I see both sides, you know, of the spectrum. You know, hey, you are human. Hey, you are standing up. What you mean? Mean like, I want to say Deshaun Jackson thought he was coming off at a different way, when actuality he was coming off like a racist little mf'er, right? So, I don't know. I mean. 
I agree he should probably be cut, yes, to, I, I don't know, like, is the word set, like, are we trying to set an example, like, of, like, hey, no, just don't, like I think don't it, I think it needs or? to start. It needs to start being like, damn, you need to hold these people accountable for their actions. Like, we can't just give them a slap on the wrist and continue to play in millions of dollars when, you know, the average Joe is out here. He says something like that. He's getting fired. He's got to go home to his wife and kids and be like, yo, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, there's actually people like at the place where I work. If you get a DUI or get arrested, you do get fired. Like, you don't even have to be charged for like anything. You have to be... Like if you are detained and carried down to the jail and bailed out of jail, you're more likely. And I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear. Well, they come from you know they come from that background or they come from the hood or they don't come from anything. Guess what? I didn't come from anything either. I come from a. I, I lived in a trailer park and I lived in a trailer most my not all. Of, I lived in a trailer all of my childhood, so I came from nothing. I'm. I'm. I have no problem admitting. When I was growing up, we were, you know, we were kind of like trailer trash. You know right. what I mean? And I've came up and I've been there. I st- yeah. I, I'm not going, I'm not going to go out and say something like that. Like, what would that say to my employees? I'd have everybody quit on me. You know what I mean? Because they exactly. hold me accountable. Right. So they should be held accountable for their actions too. cut him. So uh, Stephen here in the, or sorry, Steve Deer in the chat says Castro actually started to admire Hitler when he was younger. And both are actually very, very horrible. Jameson says they're both no, I, psycho di- dictators. That was my point. So yeah, I mean, I mean, gotcha. Yeah, so yeah, they're um, both horrible people. Don't get me wrong. Just yeah. Hitler was a little bit more horrible, <laughs> right? I, was, I mean, like I think Hitler was was kind of more, um, like idolized. So you can kind of twist. I mean, like I'm not saying we 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 twisted stuff, like, but it is more known what he did compared to Hat to Castro, because you know. Hitler started a war war. Castro kind of didn't, you know, but yeah, none the, Hitler none was of, trying to take over the world. <laughs> right. I mean, he wanted to be the world leader. So uh, basically, guys, what we were talking about was Deshaun Jackson highlighted a quote from Hitler, posted it on Instagram or Twitter. I can't can't can't, can't remember what it was. And we we're talking about if he should be cut. Now, the, the reason Let why us know I, in the comments, what do y'all think? Yeah. Should he be cut? Yes or no? Yeah, so like in the comments, guys, if you're listening to us on Facebook, head over to the Mike and Mike Man Hour. If you're on RTF uh, Sports Network, we can't see your chat. You have to come over to the Mike and Mike Hour to interact, act with us. The reason why we're bringing this up is because Riley Cooper was also a Philadelphia wide receiver. They cut him for saying the N word after Riley Cooper had a very successful season. Was a very he he was on the up and up, and then and and all and then all of a sudden he got cut. So Deshaun Jackson. Uh, I don't want to say this, but I do want to say this because this, this is probably true. The reason why the Philadelphia Eagles are not going to cut him is because he is a black man. And what's going on right now? Yeah. It would be a PR nightmare. Yeah, exactly. That is why he has, he has not been cut yet. I believe the, Phil, the Philadelphia Eagles have come out and said you know they're very disappointed. We're going to have to talk yes. to them. But the minute that video of Riley Cooper came out, he was cut like five hours after that. Boom! Like a white guy. Yeah, they said wasted the no N-word. time. You're, you're like you're like you're gone. And you know what? I don't. I hate the Philadelphia Eagles with the passion. But you know what? I commend them for what they did. Like as soon as they saw that, boom! You gotta go. I, that's that's what I'm talking about. You you gotta hold these people accountable for their actions. Like you can't be out there just saying the N word if you're a white dude. What's wrong with you? Right. I mean, I mean, it, it, like it basically comes back to the end of the day, kind of who you are, because. Look at the Kansas City Chiefs situation a couple years ago. Cream Hunt was caught on video. It was an edited video of him hitting a female. The whole video, the female spit in his face, and then he reacted to it. So we didn't see that until after the fact, but the Kansas City Chiefs reacted pretty quickly, pretty swiftly, cut him, and then last season they had Ty, Ty, Tyreek Hill issue. A video, or I believe it was a phone recording, come out and said, Hey, you hit your son in the like, in, like in the like in the chest, and you know uh, child abuse. Well, the yeah, Chiefs, and, because and Tyreek Hill is kind of an up and up athlete, let it let it play out, and it turned out Ty- yeah. Tyreek Hill did nothing wrong. Yeah, but you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna take that Tyreek Hill situation, and let's compare it to the Adrian Peterson situation. Adrian Peterson whooped his son on the butt with the belt. 
Well, was it a belt or like, or like a stick? No, it was a. I, it, uh, it may have been a switch. Yeah, I, I don't know. My grandfather beat me with a switch when I was growing up. Right. What's this? This is what's wrong with America today. <laughs> exactly. Everybody's scared to whoop their kids. Look, I'm not telling you to go out there and beat the shit out of your kids. I'm not saying that, but like a swat on the ass is different. A than swat on the ass helps. Kids. Yeah. Yeah, or, or you know, when they get older, a belt to the ass works. Yeah, sorry uh, for all of you that are, you know, want to coddle your kids and all that. That's why they grow up to be dickheads. Yeah. So Jameson did say it like it was a switch. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I'm gonna be flat out honest. I don't care who knows this is. If any of my boys act up, they're getting a hand on the ass instantly. No questions asked. No. I mean, like it is. It is. It is not to to put a fear in fear into in like into my sons. It is the fact of self respect. Like, hey, I asked you to stop. I asked you to stop again. Then I'm going to spank your ass. So you, you yeah. had literally three times to stop it, and you didn't do it. A spanking gets their attention. It is not to hurt them. It is not to harm them. It is not to break their legs or whatever. It is to get an attention to say, hey, I told you to stop. Now I freaking mean it, right? So yep. That's exactly what Adrian Peterson mean because he is a country. Well, he grew up in Texas. Yeah, he to, is a country to, boy. Yeah, I mean, I I remember when I was I don't know nine, ten, eleven years old. My grandma would beat me with a wooden spoon. Like I was jacking around. I was a dickhead kid. I was jacking around with my cousins. I pushed them down and made them cry. My grandma grabbed the wooden spoon, spanked it over my ass, and then I got a spanking for breaking her wooden spoon because she hit it. Like she hit me way like with it. That that's just the way it was. I turned out just fine. Just my, fine. You got spanking. I'm you turned out just oh, fine. Hell yeah. You are. Oh, successful. my mom would spank my mom would spank me with anything that was within arm's reach. Yeah. I mean, plastic spoon, wooden spoons. I mean, yeah. the worst, the worst was a fly swatter, man. Those things hurt so bad. A what? A fly swatter? A what? Oh fly, fly, yeah. Fly water. My my mom got me with a hanger one time. Ooh, I, like one of those metal ones, huh? That, yeah, those metal hangers with the <laughs> yeah. little blue on the bottom. Ugh. Yeah, I got yeah. I got, you straightened I got up it real quick, though, right? Times. You never did real that. quick. <laughs> I, I mean, I deserved it. I was being a little asshole. I kept pushing her buttons, right? You know, because I was more scared of my dad than I was my mom. Yeah, um, okay. and she kept telling me over and over and over, and I didn't want to listen, and then. I ain't yeah. gonna lie. I know my mom was in here listening. I seen her pop up on my live feed, and my mom's threat was, uh, "Don't you just wait till your dad he comes home?" Like my my mom my mom was a pushover, and then I found out that my dad was like kind of a, like open like an open ended threat person. Like he hit me with the belt two <laughs> three times, but then like after that he's like, oh, I'm, "I'm hitting him too hard." Now grandma, wait. don't make me tell your grandma. Ooh. Grandma would beat Ooh. my ass. <laughs> so that was like when, so like my mom would let it go and let it go and let it go and let it go. And then she would get to a point where it's like, just wait till your dad gets home. <laughs> I would literally be fucking so scared. I would go to my room and I would go to sleep because I was like, uh, like, oh, I really messed up. Mike, let me tell you a, a story. When I was little, my, like I, I say little, I was like, fifth or sixth, fifth, fourth or fifth, fifth grade. My parents were building like our, like our house. Like we moved from like a little small tray, tray, tray house. And we we're building a house into like, you know, like, like long, like a, like a, like a long story short, we were building a, like a house. We were staying at my aunt, like at my aunt, at my aunt's house. We were like me and all my cousins were staying in the basement, hanging out. It was like December cold as balls. Like we had the blanket up over this, up over the uh, space here, you know, keeping us warm. And the blanket caught fire, right? We put it out, and I was so scared shitless of my dad knowing that I burnt a blanket by total <laughs> accident that I slept under my bunk bed, put <laughs> put pillows up for like, and because like they're out drinking and partying, you know, having a having a having a good time, I, I'm like, I don't want my dad to know this like at all. So I hid under under underneath underneath our bunk beds, packed up pillows and like this is the first time i saw my dad like be so i was like well mistakes happen like, damn mistakes do happen. <laughs> what, you, what what did you say <laughs> your ears perk up like i didn't have to see it under my bunk bed damn so uh jumping over the chat here jameson says what do y'all think of the rashad 
Mozart news. Kyle Shanahan usually goes running back by committee, so Mozart better know his role. Otherwise, Devontae Freedom or, or Freeman or someone else in the house will replace him. I don't know what that what that news is. Mike, yeah, I haven't that... seen I, I haven't seen that news yet. Yeah. Um so I mean James Kyle Shanahan really is. does is a is a running back by committee. Uh I'm guessing Raheem Mozart was uh the running back. Like is he Along is he asking Dante for Freeman? more money or something or what? Like I'm like I don't know. Let's let's check that out. So speaking of more money, we're we we gotta get a Dak at Dak Prescott at some point today. So Oh no! Um, Raheem Mozart requests trade from the 49ers five hours ago. Interesting. Hmm. Is there a reason why he requested the trade? Was he wanting more money that he didn't get? I mean, uh, he wanted a uh, the they were in unproductive talks with the 49ers about um, adjusting his contract, which paid him for uh, special teams, and uh, I guess he was not happy with that. Well, let me tell you this. We Mike, we've been over this talk. Running backs are a dime yeah, we a dozen. Have. Running backs are yeah, a dime they, a dozen. Mozart, you are, I don't ones. think you're a top five running back in the league. You can't be demanding a trade, yeah. demanding money. Like, cut your ass. You, you you're gonna end up on the Cincinnati Bengals on a three and thirteen team. Congratulations. Yeah, I mean he not he's he's second second string, I wanna say. Well, uh, like uh Jameson was right. They were running back by committee last season. They had that Fullback. I'm not even going to try to butcher his Russian name by any means. And they had Mozart, and then had somebody else that was in there for like third down special team plays. So then they like they had three or four running backs that they used a lot, much like the Kansas City Chiefs. So yes, he had a pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, postseason. I, 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 you know, I always see him with 100 plus 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 yards. The reason why that because the Jimmy G couldn't throw throw the ball in the playoffs until it was, it was like it was crunch time, and then he was just shit, 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 shit a brick. And I'm looking up his looking up his stats here. He is 28 years old too, buddy. Your shelf life of a, of a running back is over. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's not like you're it's not like you're fucking Ezekiel Elliott or even then Barkley. Ezekiel Elliott, you are replaceable, up. man. Uh, no running backs like that are. Those aren't replaceable, man. Yeah, they are. They are re- they're replaceable with uh, Tony Pollard and Kareem Hunt on the same team. That will replace no, Zeke Elliott. Let, let me let me tell you something. Kareem Hunt and Tony Pollard together do not make Ezekiel Elliott. I'm sorry. Really? No, sir. No. <laughs> no. Ask Zeke Jay, Elliott is a top. Jameson, I bet you Jameson agrees with me. Zeke Elliott is a top running back in the league. Like, like, just like we debated, like, I don't know, a month ago on the Just for Click show, be before the Mike and Mike and hour was here. Uh, there are a few running backs far, two and far between that are the guy that deserve that money. Ezekiel yeah. Elliott is one of them. I, I'll give you that. Shaquan Barkley is one of them. Locke as well, and uh, maybe I, I almost want to slide Alvin Kamara up into that spot. Just, I, yeah, just Kamara because of what and, he does, and of yeah, course, I want to slide. I want to slide Nick Chubb in there too. Nick Chubb is a beast. He's underrated. I think Nick Chubb is really underrated because he's on the Browns. Well, he is also underrated because he does split time with Cream Hunt, and uh, there is another running back there as well. I, his name slipped in my mind. So Nick Chubb can go to any any team in the league, and any team in the league, and be a starter. Besides the Cowboys and the Giants. And the Saints. Actually, I think he would start in like in the like if Nick Chubb would go to the Saints, he would start on the Saints and they would move Cream uh uh not Cream Hunt, uh Alvin Kamara into like a slot H back type of role to get them both on the field. I mean Sean Sean Payton is smart enough that he knows he has to have his athletes on the like on the field one hundred percent. So Ooh, can you imagine if Nick Chubb went to the Ravens? No, because that'd be, that, that'd be that, kind of nasty. That, no, they wouldn't. They what? Would, they, they would be the same thing as last year, man. They would be a first round playoff extra. Mark Ingram is is like a <sighs> is like a young Nick Chubb or an old Nick Chubb, I should 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 say. Let's 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 move on from your Lamar Jackson hating ass. <laughs> so let's go ahead and talk Dak Prescott. Now let's that talk Patrick, Dak Prescott. now that Patrick Mahomes has signed the record breaking record breaking deal in the NFL was with twelve years. Five hundred three million dollars. Yeah, Dak Prescott Dak wants Prescott a ten. Mi- 
Dak Prescott wants a 10-year, $1 billion deal now. Dak Prescott better be happy with his franchise tender. Guys, let's be totally honest. <laughs> There's, he's not even worth the franchise tender. He's not worth he's, $31 no, million no. a year. Yes, I know. Everybody is going to tell me. Yes, he had a... One he had his best statistical year last season. He threw for like forty nine hundred yards and he threw for thirty touchdowns last season. But that's that's, lie. that's that that's great. How many playoff teams did he beat last season? How many teams did he beat that were over five hundred? Don't worry, I'll wait. I believe Z. the I believe he did beat a play a playoff team, right? No. Who? Um don't believe so. I'd have to look. I feel like they, I don't know. It, they beat the Eagles once, though, right? Yeah, they beat the Eagles. Uh, Eagles I mean, if you want yeah. to count that as a playoff team. But, but the whole they were, NFC they were below East 500 was trash at, like, at, like, at the time, though, right? No, they, the whole NFC East was trash last season. Right. Remember, it was the laughing stock of the, se- of the, of the league last year. So... I was on a show earlier today, Strikeout Beer, like another RTF Sports Network team, and I told them, I mean, I believe I had the Cowboys going 10-6, and six, winning the NFC East. And, mm. and like, I kind of backpedaled on that, uh, like, a little bit. And I said, I wouldn't be surprised if a losing record makes it to the playoffs on the, in the NFC East, meaning 7-9. and nine. Because we've yeah. seen it, we've seen it before. It was, it was it, I believe it was Seattle Se- Seahawks made it as a 7-9. Seven, seven and they got a home a home game versus Seattle Seahawks or versus the New Orleans Saints were like thirteen and three like 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 at that season and they got a wild card and they actually beat the Saints so it it, it would not surprise me if a seven and nine team makes the playoffs from from, from the NFC East if Dak so, Prescott so is that quarterback the only team you can count as a playoff team last season would have been Philadelphia they lost to New Orleans. They lost to Green Bay. They lost to the Jets. They lost to Minnesota. They lost to New England, Buffalo, Chicago, and Philadelphia. So let me go ahead and jump over to the comments here, the, uh, Jameson. I see your other comments, like, like about the trades and stuff stuff, 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 stuff like that. But let me address this comment right here. Dak Prescott will get a big contract because there aren't very many great quarter quarterbacks. That is a bold statement. Yeah, there are I many great quarterbacks. It's just there's 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 not a lot of great quarterbacks that are willing to move from the teams. They're contracting obligated for three or four years down 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 the road. Now, if you look at the draft coming up, you have Justin Fields, you have Trevor Lawrence, which I think is going to be a bust. I'm calling it right now. I think Trevor Lawrence is going to be a bust in the NFL. Mark my words, July eighth, twenty twenty, Trevor Lawrence will be a bust in the N- in the NFL. Crap. There is, I mean, Jay, Jameson, I see what you're saying. The teams that need a quarterback are going to probably overpay for a underrated quarterback, much like what the Jacksonville Jaguars did with Nick Foles. I could see that Agreed. happening. I mean, I, I think, I, I mean, I, I've said it. I think Andy Dalton is a better quarterback for the Cowboys system right now. Yes, Much the better. system, correct. With the system, yes, you are correct. Yeah, with the system. I mean, you, can you blame it on... Cowboys um, suck anyways. Cut bait, save money, and spend money else it's on someone decent. <laughs> that a baby Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I agree. Um, but you, could you blame it on Jason Garrett? Yeah, last season. You, sure, you, we were predictable. Yeah. Then the year before, we blamed it on Linehan. Like, we can't constantly keep blaming coaches... For Dak's sorry ass play, when it comes into those moments where Dak, you have to go win the game. The Zeke, reason why they're Zeke blamed, can't help you. The reason why they're blaming coaching staff is because of polit- the predictable playing calling, the predictable this, the lack of a four three when you have a three four team. You, you got yada, so yada. The fact what, is on me, paper, let the me Cowboys ask you a have Super Bowl caliber team. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. So we 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 talk about great quarterbacks, right? Right. That transcends in or it 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 brings you from a level of good to great with the Aaron Rodgers, the Tom Brady's, the Peyton Manning's, you know, those quarterbacks, yeah. right? And then you got that second tier which is where Dak sits. 
how many of those quarterbacks in that first tier, yeah, they may get a play, but they check that shit at the line and they start moving things around because they know, oh, look, they're lined up this way. I'm that's football IQ. Here. Football IQ. Exactly. And that's something Dak doesn't have. You're going to have to tell him exactly what to do. Think about it. Here, think, I'm going somewhere with yeah, this. I'm, I'm, I'm following you. I'm just tell me, tell me the, tell me the best season that Dak Prescott has ever had. Ooh, Playing I, wise and stat wise, like you were just like, whoa, okay, we might have something. Probably his first year when Tony Romo got 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 hurt. And who was in Dak Prescott's ear every time he came to the sideline, and every time who was in Dak Prescott's ear in his helmet would have been Tony Romo, more than likely, right? Thank you. Yes. You've got to tell Dak Prescott every – you've got to have someone that is going to tell him, like, look, if you see this, do this. If you see that, do that. Dak Prescott can't process that on his own. He's been in the league four years now, and it's – ever since Romo stopped, Dak has been on the decline. Yes, he had a statistical year, a, one of his best years last season. I get that, right? That's fine. But you know what? I don't give a shit about your stats. I give a shit about my team going to the damn playoffs – and stop finishing eight and eight and going to a Super Bowl. And Dak Prescott doesn't have that football IQ to go up to the line, call an audible, change the play. Either that or you don't have the balls because you think you're going to get cut or whatever. Great quarterbacks take charge and say, we're going to do it this way. So last year was the first year that he had Kellen Moore as a offensive coordinator like as well. So I think a second year with Kellen Moore – as an offensive coordinator, and they had a also like a special assistant. I'm trying to think of his name. He was a quarterback too. Was it uh, John Kitna? Yeah, John Kitna was like was there too. So, I mean, I'm not saying those 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 guys are as are, are as bright as Tony Rome Romo is because I've learned a lot about the NFL listening to Tony Romo in the booth. He's, he's very smart. Yeah, he's very intelligent. Now, Kayla Moore was also a backup to Tony Romo. He was listening to Tony Romo's ear as well. He was in the meetings. He was listening. He, he, he was watching him learn. You know, John Kitna was around the league for what? I don't know, 15, 16 years. He was around for a long time on many, many teams. It, 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 it hit his hard to stay in the, in the NFL for five years, let, let alone 10 to 15. You have to be some type of special talent, some type of smart person. So he has two yeah. smart people in his ear right now every day moving forward. So, Dak Prescott might have an accelerated year with a better offense, a better coordinator. Yada, yada, better yada. offense. I mean, you, you got the same offense. The only thing that's going to be different with this offense is we're not going to have Travis Frederick, and then uh, we'll you have, have a team. totally different offensive scheme. You have a head well, coach yeah, a whole Mike, different uh, Mike, offensive uh, scheme. But as far as personnel, it's going to be the same people that you're used to playing with. And are you telling so, me that that personnel that Dallas Cowboys have are are like are not Super Bowl caliber team? If you simulate every game. On Madden 20, which is pretty accurate. I know, the right? Go, the Cowboys go to the Super Bowl nine times out of ten. Let me, let me, no. I think the Cowboys have a, they, they do. They have a, a stacked roster on offense. The coaching stack and, was, the, was the downfall. And you, and you know, the, the on their defense, their defense is going to be, whoa, this season. Their defense is going to be monster. That front seven is going to be scary. But. On the offensive side of the ball, you have a quarterback who is doesn't have foot that great of football IQ. Hello, he was drafted in the fourth round. Yes, I get it. There are you do find diamonds in the rough in the third, fourth, fifth, sixth round, oh, or even undrafted. I get it. Dak Prescott is not one of those gem those diamonds in the rough. He's just not. He's a backup quarterback right now in a starting role. He would have been better coming into the league and really learning under Tony Romo, and then he would have been a better starter. Which, which that was the plan until a preseason game when he broke his back versus the Seattle Seahawks, right? Yeah, I mean, and that that was his that was Dak's rookie season, but Romo was ready to come back. And guess what? Dak Jerry was having Jones, a great year, though. I don't give a shit. It's Tony Romo, and and Jerry Jones shit on Tony Romo. That would have been a year. Hey, we just just like Drew Brees, right? 
Teddy Bridgewater was hot. You didn't leave Teddy Bridgewater in there. You took him out and put Drew Brees back in because that's Drew Brees. Was really Teddy Bridgewater, Bridgewater hot though? Look, look who, who they're playing. I mean, he was game pretty, manager. Pretty low competition. I mean, he was a game manager. He went in there and won you some games, right? Just like Dak Prescott did. They weren't pretty by any means. We were barely winning those games. Now, come on. Which is which is a wins a win at the at the end no, of the day. No, you're absolutely right, but. When you have Tony Romo coming back and he's healthy and you take a shit on him and leave him on the sideline and slap him in the face like that, bro, no. Yeah, so we 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 did recently just get a new like. Key Williams, thank you for the like. You have been entered to win the $100 Amazon gift card. Guys, if you share the page, you get 10 more entries into that $100 Amazon uh Get a giveaway that we're giving once we get 500 likes. Mike, I know we're over the hour, but we're, we're, we're having such a good conversation. Let's yeah, just, let's, no, let's, yeah, let's, let's just, let's just let, it, let it roll. So, guys, you're getting live, raw, and uncut sports talk right here on the Mike and Mike Man Hour, going on hour number two here. So, looking at some of the comments here, it says uh, the Cowboys are not winning the winning the, winning winning the division. Cowboys nope. are going eight and eight, ten and six at best. I had them at ten and six, I, like actually. And I, I think I had him at nine and seven. Year. I think I had him at eight and eight, nine or seven. Yeah. And you and, and and listen, guys, you were talking to a true blue Dallas Cowboy fan. Like I bleed silver and blue ever since ever since I can remember. The Cowboy I love the Dallas Cowboys, right? But without with but we're not going to see another Super Bowl. If we lock Dak Prescott in for a long-term deal that they, like they want for the five years, we are not going to see a Super Bowl for a five, for five years unless they cut him and they bring in another quarterback. So, 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 strikeout beer is saying that uh, uh, the the year that Tony Roman broke his back and he came back healthy, he he would have probably got hurt again. I don't know, maybe, maybe, Tony, maybe not. Tony I mean, Roman was very that, very vigilant through his years, was he not? I believe that was the first time he ever missed a game, if, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I mean, the dude played with punctured lungs against the San Francisco 49ers and won Jamison, yeah. by the way. <laughs> yeah, he did beat the San Francisco 49ers, but they, I believe he lost to the uh, Seattle Seahawks in the playoffs that season by a botched field goal snap and getting tackled like at the two-yard line. So, uh, I mean, we are talking about Dak Prescott, and I mean, a guy, a guy, a guy, a guy, I don't even know what started the conversation. But the question that, that I'm going to ask you right now, Mike, is if Dak Prescott does not sign a long-term deal with Dallas Cowboys, where does he end up? You said he is a backup in a starting role, but I can name you five or six teams that he could start on right now and probably be successful. Who? Who? I've said it before. Who? Las Vegas Raiders. I think he's better than the Carr and uh, Mariota. That offensive line sucks. Keep going. Yeah, but he has a scrambling ability to 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 extend it just enough to to. He's not accurate enough when he's on the run. So no, he won't be successful on the Raiders. Okay, how about L.A. Chargers? Their offensive line is decent. <laughs> they don't look have at a probably... running game anymore because they traded off Todd Gurley to the Falcons, and I don't uh, know who the exactly. running back. Exactly, he doesn't have a running game. Dak Prescott needs pieces around him to even be successful. So no, he's not going to be successful whoa, there because you can't hey. put the game. You cannot put the game on Dak Prescott's back to go win it for you. We saw that last season. We saw that the season before that season, we saw it when he went and played green Bay in the, when they went, when they played green Bay in the first round of the playoffs, we saw it. Then they stopped, they shut down the Zeke. They shut down Zeke and they, they made, Dak go win the game, and Dak couldn't do it. He chokes every Sorry, time. you're you're referring to the playoff game when they lost to the Rams a couple years ago, right? No, no, they lost to the Packers. I think it was the first season, Dak's first season. He showed okay. it then. Okay, uh, he, he can't win without help. Okay, so the reason w you say Dak cannot win without help, uh, much like Le much like Lamar Jackson, right? Lamar Jackson only good like only wins when everything falls in like a lot. lot like in the place, right? So I, I knew he was going to bring Lamar Jackson but into it. We we also haven't seen Dak Prescott really without any weapons around him. You know, he has always had Zeke. He like he's like he he's always had a quote number one receiver. the The only time we 
really saw Dak with a missing piece was the playoff game versus the Rams when they couldn't complete a third and three when they needed Tide and they needed Jason Witten. So with that being said, I would like to see Dak Prescott without any, you know, quote, star players, Zeke, you know, Amari Cooper, et cetera, just to see how he does. I think he would see a different Dak Prescott without all those star-studded athletes around him. I think he would be I, a top no, 10, top five no quarterback. Way. No way. No, dude, no. Because when when Zeke was suspended, right, he, he still had number one receivers around him and still couldn't do shit. I mean. He needs a run game behind him. Every Everybody needs a run game behind him. Um, Name what? one quarterback that does not need a running game behind him. Aaron Rodgers. Uh, we saw he needed a running game versus San Francisco 4 49ers in the NFC playoff game and that regular season game. They got their and ass waxed needed, twice. He needed he needed help on the outside too with wide receivers. I'm, I'm you you asked me to name one, right? When when there's 53 seconds left on the clock and you need to score a touchdown, even if you don't have a run game or you don't have number one receivers, I'm still picking Aaron Rodgers. There's a difference between playing pre-bent defense and actual defense when you need a running game to actually, you know, win the game. So let's go two minutes then. And uh, I, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, as much as I hate to agree with Jameson, yeah, Tom Brady. Tom Brady doesn't need a war- run game. Um, Tom Russell Brady Wilson has always had a running game. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? Tom Brady has what? always a a short passing game is just as good as as a running game. Tell me I'm wrong. No, you yes, you're wrong. It's so, still passing at the end of the day. You are still passing, but a a short passing game, five yards and under, is just as good as a running game, because a short passing game opens up the long passing game, which is ju- exactly what the running game does. A a, a a like a running game brings up that safety, but it doesn't help for every down. single team, obviously, because Dak Prescott throws nothing but short damn passes. But it's still when it opens up the the, the when it opens up the him. long game, he overthrows. It's so still, there, it mean, still opens it up though, right? Yeah, but I mean that. But we're talking about every Dak quarterback Prescott needs a not running needing, game, we're, right? But we're Dak Prescott needs it, and Russell Wilson doesn't. He he's always had a running game too. He's only had beast mode. And that's it. Uh, didn't they have a running back after beast beast mode that had a fairly good year? Yeah, he was decent. He's no, he's no, he was no Nick name? Chubb, Saquon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can't even think of his name. He's no Saquon Barkley, Nick Chubb. Elliot, Kamara, like, you know what I mean? Todd Gurley, like, those are the kind of players that, that you think about, right? N- besides Beast Mode, tell me the run, running back for, for Seattle. He so can't. let me address this comment. Brandon from uh, Strikeout Beer, uh, thank you for having me on, Brandon, earlier tonight. He says, oh, oh yeah, Tom Brady has never had a run, running back. Have you heard of the Hall of Famer James White and Burkhead? If you think Burkhead and James White are Hall of Famers, I don't know what you're drinking over there. Yeah, but damn you. It, and what what's the name of their show? Uh, Strikeout Beer. They must be drinking a whole lot of beer over there. I'm if like you six think beers James in, so. White and Burkhead are, you know, I think he was being sarcastic. I I, I really do, <laughs> Brandon. You got to be being sarcastic. Hopefully, so guys, we are talking about Dak Prescott here, and like, and guys, we see a lot more people tuning in. Thank you for that. Thank you for the likes. Thank you for the shares you are entered into in that $100 Amazon gift card that we're giving away. Ten entries if, if you guys share this live feed, like our Facebook page as well. Once you hit the 500 likes, we're giving away that Amazon gift 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 card. And you can't forget Corey Dillon. Corey Dillon did try. A, he did go from the, uh, what was it, the Bengals or the Browns? I can't remember who he went. Bengals. Yeah, so. I mean, the Bengals, the Bengals and the Browns are were historical for those one year wonders and tailback. Like you had what Peyton Hillis, you had Corey Dillon, in the, the whatever. So, huge Cowboys fan here says Dre Orr. Well, welcome from one Cowboys fan to like another. Mike Dre is your boy. Welcome, there. welcome, welcome. We love Cowboys fans as long as, I mean, no, I mean, put your put put in your opinion. I. I Cowboys are going to be shit this season, man. And it's going to be because of Dak Prescott. They are not going to be shit because of Dak Prescott because he'll be benched by week four. I'm telling you. Know, you. I hope so. And you know what? I hope he sits out. Sit your ass out. So Andy Dalton can get in there and show you how it's done. 
I think Andy Dalton is a better quarterback than Dak Prescott. He was just in a shitty situation up there in Cincinnati. Right. Um, they were I, I a, think... they were habitual average team. Yes, much, much like the Browns are. Yeah. So, Mike, we have to ask you if I mean like let's circle back around the like the like the wagon. I said Dak Dak Prescott can't start on other teams. I said the I said the I said the Raiders. You like you you said no. The offensive line is trash. And then I said the Chargers. You said no. They don't have a have a running game anymore. And I mistake I mistakenly said that Gurley got traded from the Chargers. He he was a, like he was a Ram, but he did get traded. Like 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 either way. And then I'm going to throw out another team for you, the Jacksonville Jag, 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 Jaguars. Um, we said it last night, and Jameson said that they are dumb enough to give Dak Prescott like $50 million like a, like a year. I don't know if Jacksonville Jaguars has a cap room to make another dumb mistake like they did with Nick Foles and trade, 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 trade him off. So I'm going to say the Chicago Bears. I think, mm. Dak, I think Dak Prescott fits what Matt – what Matt Nagy wants to do up there in, in Chicago. Yeah, I think he can go to – I think that's maybe the only team he can go to and be successful. And, Jameson, I really like that comment. Andy Dalton reminds me of Tony Romo. That you, you, I, Is that, that's wait, hard to so say. How, how, does he re, how does he remind you of the leadership, of the ability, or the great regular season and flake out in the playoffs? Yeah, let us know. And, Dre, I hope, he's get, I hope he gets benched by week four. I really do. So, like, I, I've been on record saying that I think I, I believe week five was my yep. cutoff was was because like or no sorry it was it was week six it was week six or week six he'll be benched week seven is the bye week if if I'm not mistaken if if they lose three or four games in those first six weeks of the season he will be benched he will be traded I'm I'm putting that aspect on too he will be traded at some point during the season. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense because the franchise center is guaranteed. So it's not like, you know, the Cowboys are going to lose anything. He'll be an unrestricted free agent next the, season. So the, the only thing I could think about him not being, you know, quality trade bait is the fact that he did sign a franchise tender. So he would get traded. And then at the end of the year, he would be a free agent still. So there, there had to be some type of deal worked in that he signs a contract with that particular team. So... Where do you think Dak would get traded to? Would it be Chicago? Would it be Jacksonville? If they were to work out a trade, I don't know. That's it's that's tough to say. I, I don't see. I just don't see a lot of teams wanting Dak Prescott's services. I really don't. Um, so in Jacksonville, I, Jacksonville, Florida, you think Garner Minshew is the answer? No, I mean Jacksonville, obvious an obvious choice. Um, you Who know, would you they, take they, Dak Prescott or Garner Minshew. Dak, uh, I don't know. Let's play. I think, would you? I, would you, I think, would you r- rather? Would you rather have Garner Minshew or Dak Prescott as your quarterback? I'd, I'd take Dak. Would you rather have Missile Trubisky or Dak Prescott? <laughs> On the Cowboys? I uh, just. Uh, it would probably be the Bears since he'd be traded. Yeah, Dak on the Bears. Would you rather have Josh Allen or Dak Prescott? Josh Allen. Are you a Josh Allen fan? Yeah, like is like is he your boy? No. 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 He's a better I think he has a better <laughs> arm. I think he has better I think he has a better arm, he has better accuracy, and he has better football IQ than Dak Prescott. So let's go ahead and jump over to the chat here. Like I said, Jameson says that Andy Dalton does remind him of Tony Romo. He clarified and all, all everything that 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 we said plus playing styles are similar yeah dre Orr says hell hell no Andy Dalton is nothing more than a Matt Castle really hmm Matt Castle was a backup in college backup in the NFL he had what yeah I don't I, I, I think Andy Dalton is a great in yeah, I think Andy Dalton is a way better quarterback than I'm still Matt. bitter about Matt Castle. Dre, I'm mad at you for bringing that, that up because Kansas City paid way too much for him. And we, way too much. Jesus. And then uh, uh, Brandon Bingham over there from Strikeout Beer says, Dalton wins more games than – or he asked this question, does Andy Dalton win more games than Dak Prescott this season? If he doesn't mm-hmm. get traded. If he doesn't get traded – 
if Dak Prescott gets benched by week six, week seven, yeah, I think Andy Dalton wins more games than Dak Prescott. Especially, I mean, look, you're you're about to give <clears throat> you're about to give Andy Dalton, who not only has better a better arm, better accuracy, better pocket presence, has better football IQ, and not to mention fits Mike McCarthy's scheme. You're about to give, the, and with the star-studded cast around Andy Dalton, and let's be honest, Andy Dalton's never had this level of talent no. in Cincinnati, ever. So you're about to give Andy Dalton this level of talent? I think Andy Dalton shows you what he should have been in Cincinnati. Yeah, I mean, if he would have had a running game and a head coach that gave it yeah. shit, right? So me, by de facto, special, whatever the words like is, if, if Andy Dalton gets a chance to play for the Dallas Cowboys this season, he will by default have more wins than Dak Prescott because Dak Prescott is only going to get benched if he loses three or four games in those first five-week spans. So, therefore, that would, that, that would give Dak Prescott two wins on the season, giving Andy Dalton eight weeks to win two games. Right, it would be nine weeks to win two games. I think he can win two games in nine weeks. So, uh, Dak in Washington, huh? What's that? That's interesting. Jameson? Dak and Washington? No, I think they are a hundred percent buying into um Dwayne Haskins this season. And they still have Alex Smith on there, like on the roster. Yes, he's like thirty six years old coming off that horrendous leg injury. I Man, but it's like, Alex Smith. I think Alex, Alex Smith, Smith is Dak. like really <laughs> underrated. Do you agree? Uh no, because I freaking love Alex Smith. I have no, but three in Alex the grand Smith scheme of things, like in the house. A lot of people don't really look at Alex Smith as like one of those top quarterbacks in the league, and he is. Well, the reason why we we overlook him is is is, is because look 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 what happened to him in San Francisco. He he got a concussion week five or week six. Colin Kaepernick came in, kind of killed it, and then the next thing you know, he's traded to Kansas City. He he does great in Kansas City. I'm a Kansas City Chiefs 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 fan. We were three and thirteen, four four and twelve. Alex Smith comes in, we're nine and seven, winning the division year in and and year out. Then he takes a backseat to Patrick Mahomes, knowing like, hey, I know Patrick Mahomes is here to replace me. I'm going to coach co coach him up, be the be the best professional that he can be. Patrick Mahomes is the greatest quarterback in the league right now. Alex Smith is definitely over or sorry, underrated. And he just he he just had the short end of the I stick mean, like every before, time he's, he's but, like he's got the concussion the broken leg and just like it, it, before concussions. before he broke his leg he was he was kind of scary I was kind of scared of the Redskins yeah uh weren't they undefeated at that point yeah, I, I believe so and then, I believe they were undefeated when he broke his leg yeah and then he broke his leg and then the backup quarterback broke his leg and then the third yeah, string McCoy. and then the third, McCoy. yeah and then the third string quarterback got a concussion so they're on like their fourth string quarterback i believe at one point they signed mark mark chances like that year yeah, 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 I think they did. they're just like bringing people off the street like hey we need a quarterback you want to play uh floyd central high school do you guys got a backup quarterback that we can borrow yeah go ahead send him <laughs> over to washington right <laughs> so uh i was in the chats here let me uh pull up some more chats here Dre said something about matt castle there there we go dre i'm still mad at you about matt castle thing and why you had to bring up that bring a Bad, bad memory. Um, Jacksonville Jaguars is tanking for Trevor Lawrence, the kid from Clemson. They can do all they want. Trevor Lawrence is going to be a bust. Do you think? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think Trevor Lawrence is going to be a bust. That kid is a pure talent, man. I, I don't think there's any teams tanking this, 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 this year because there, <laughs> there are two, three, four quarterbacks. In the draft, that could definitely be game changers for any NFL team. So it, it doesn't really matter where you lay. You're going to so, play your season out. So Dre, Dre Orr says Dak isn't getting benched. He's got them winning against the Rams, winning against Atlanta. Two easy I'm going to tell you right now, they're going to lose against the Seahawks. They're going to lose against the Browns. They're going to win against the Giants. They're going to lose against the Rams. And they will win against Atlanta. So four and three going into the bye week. Mm. Super Bowl contenders? I don't think so. Four, four no, one, sir. Four, four and and, I mean, especially if you don't beat teams like the Rams, Seahawks, 
Um, they'll lose against the Browns. So I got them losing against the Rams, winning against Atlanta, losing to the Seahawks, losing to the Browns, winning to the Giants. So I've got them three and two going into the bye. That's that's kind of questionable. Two and two and three isn't horrible. One and four would make me feel better going into the bye bye week. And of course, uh, jumping back over into the chats here, Jameson always has to be the voice of reason. Chiefs Bears got no Bears have no money. We're talking about trading for Dak here. The Bears got got no money. Obviously, I mean this is kind of hypothetical, but he says the Jaguars, Browns, Raiders, or Steelers, and Washington would all be good places for Dak. I didn't think about this about the. Steelers. I just didn't. I didn't either. I didn't think about the Steelers yeah. either. He kind of fits that system. Yeah, I mean. And this With is Thompson. probably Big Ben's last, 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 last season. Give him a chance it, to sit it, on the bench, learn the system, learn from Big Ben a little bit. That, could that be would be interesting. That could be interesting. Dak going to to the Steelers. I don't think he's good in Dallas. I don't. Um, would, I think he needs to get out of Dallas. Would that make Dak Prescott a elite quarterback if he went to Steelers? Sat on the bench for a you know eight or nine games, learning from Big Ben, learning the system, and then the twenty one season he come comes up, he's starting. Does does that make him a, you know maybe a elite quarterback, maybe that tier one status? I mean, he's gonna have to like go into he'll have to go into the twenty one twenty one season and go like you know thirteen and three, fourteen and two, going into the playoffs, and then come back the following season and do it again before you can even consider Dak being elite. Yeah, so let's go ahead and jump back in the comments here. Brandon from Strikeout Beer says, Dak is not getting pre- getting traded. Cowboys and Cowboys fans are, and how do you say this, loyal or nuts? I don't quite understand that comment. So he says Dak Prescott is not getting traded because the Cowboys are loyal to Dak Prescott, and the yeah. fans are nuts about Dak Prescott. Fans are not nuts about Dak Prescott. You do see some of these retarded ass, and and you know this is why the Cowboys fan base gets such a bad name because we have a bunch of fans who have no fucking idea what they're talking Are about. Are you talking about Baltimore Ravens fans too? No, shut your mouth. <laughs> I knew you, you always got to throw a jab in there for Lamar Jackson. Facts. Cowboys. Some of the some of the Cowboys fans they have no idea what the hell they're talking about. You know, I've, I'm on different uh, groups, and I ask. So why do we pay him? Because he's Dak Prescott. And what else? Well, he had good stats. Okay. Well, we didn't we didn't beat a playoff team in last year. So one, what's up? One the Eagles. And, and then they'll be like, oh, it was because of the defense. It was because of this. It was because of that. No, it was because of Dak. When you put the game on Dak's shoulders to go win the game, he chokes every single time. Yeah, I mean, they had two weeks to win one game to make it into the playoffs. I, I, I forget who the Week 16 game was. They lost that game. Week 17, they had to beat the Eagles to get into the playoffs, and they couldn't do it. So, yeah, I do agree, agree, agree with you. Jameson in the sat, chat here says, Dwayne Haskins will not live up to anything over there in Washington. Uh, I don't know about that. I mean, I think. That's hard to say. Yeah. I I I I kind of agree with Jamison. I don't think he's yeah. going to live up to be anything. Jumping back into the chat here, Dre Orr lose against the Browns. Hell no. McCarthy record against AFC is crazy good. Out of twelve years, McCarthy only missed the playoffs three years. Well, let me tell you something, Dre Orr. Mike McCarthy had Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers, which Dak is no Brett Favre. He is no Aaron Rodgers. And yes, the Browns will beat the Cowboys. I'm telling you, the Cowboys will go into that game and they're going to go up against that that Browns defense who is getting a little better and a little better every year, every year. And they're going to go in there and the Browns, it's not going to be, you know, the Browns aren't going to beat the Cowboys by, (laughs) you know, an astronomical number. It's going to be a close game. But we're going to lose because Dak Prescott. No, you are going to lose because Odell Beckham Jr. always steps up, some, steps up and plays the Cowboys really, really well. Yeah, and they're playing the Cowboys at home. Yeah, so. And Odell Beckham 
always is healthy always. too. So yeah, but I mean, he always shows out at Cowboy State. He he owns Cowboy Stadium. Should we go back to the one handed catch in the end zone? Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, if if Odell Beckham would just have a career versus the Cowboys, he would have a top ten, you know, career in the NFL. It's the fact that he has to play the other like like the other teams that doesn't make him a top ten receiver in my eyes. So jumping, uh, so just the uh, just some shout outs here. Key Williams, thank you for the share. Uh, Dre, thank you for following. Brandon and Tony as well, thank you for liking the like the uh, page. You guys are all entered into that. $100 Amazon gift card giveaway. We are giving that away every 500 likes. So 500,000, 1,500, 2,000 likes. We're giving away $100 Amazon oh, hold gift on, card. Hold on, hold on. I just saw a comment, and it just kind of – it kind of – Tony DePool. And you, hey, come to Austin and share whatever you're smoking. <laughs> Dak Prescott is the best quarterback we've had since Troy. Are you – you, hey, hey, your man, your boy, your brother from another mother, Quincy Carter said that Dak Prescott is better than Aaron Rodgers. So if Aaron Rodgers is the GOAT, by You know, de Quincy facto, Carter was also on a lot of drugs and a lot of alcohol <laughs> over the years, so we, we, we're not going to go off that. There's No, Dak Prescott cannot even hold a candle to, to, to Tony Romo. Let's be honest. Yes, did Tony Romo... Not win playoff games, of course not. He doesn't. He didn't have the team around him. Let's let me let me ask you a question. He did have DeMarco Tony Murray, oh, and and Brian. we went and we went into the playoffs that season, and that's the year Dez caught it in Green Bay, and we should have won that game. Caught it, right? All right? <laughs> so, let me ask you a question, Tony. Put Tony Romo on this Cowboys team in Tony Romo's prime, and you tell me honestly that the Cowboys are not a Super Bowl contender. They are a Super Bowl contender. They're 13-3 and three in the regular season, losing the first round of the playoffs again. Fumble you're, snap. Oh, no get goal. the hell there, Buck. You're a hate. You're, a, you're, a, you're a, a habitual hater. I'm not a habitual hater. I'm a Unless realist. Unless it is not Patrick Mahomes. You are a hater. No, actually, I am falling in love with Josh Allen. I do what like like what he is doing over there. So, mm-hmm. um, some more comments are rolling in. The comments are firing up, guys. I really love no. this. Uh, Jameson says that uh, Alex Smith reminds him much of Drew Bledsoe. That's a great comparison. Drew mm-hmm. Drew Drew Bledsoe. After he got hurt and Tom Brady took over, I believe he floated he floated to the Cowboys for a couple years, and then he floated for some more else. I mean, Drew Bledsoe is probably a, a underrated quarterback like as well. I mean, yeah, he didn't win any Super Bowls or anything like that. They're nine, nine, nine and seven, but look who he had around him. Not very, very, very much. That's a great comparison. So, yeah, I like that. I'm, I'm Drew Bledsoe. I think Drew Bledsoe is one of the mo- one one of the underrated quarterbacks in that in our time too. Yeah. I mean, uh, and then he says he's, Alex Smith needs to retire and move into coaching. Ooh, don't let that risky rot it. Come on, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if, uh, and then Dre, you know, your boy over there, you're like your cowboy lover. He, he says, absolutely. If Alex Smith is healthy, that division gets interesting. It does. No, it, it doesn't. It really, no, yes, it does. Because that now Washington as a lock, huh? No, I don't, I don't think it puts him as a lock. Um, you still have the Eagles, and yes, we don't know if Carson Wentz is going to be healthy. But if Carson Wentz stays healthy, that entire Carson season, Wentz. I'm worried about that wide receiver core. Where in Philly? Yeah, they're they're getting ready to cut De- Deshaun Watson if they're smart. they're not going to cut him. They're and not going to cut him. Didn't Nelson Aguilar get traded or something to that effect? I got to know who the receivers are besides Deshaun. Um. Yeah. Not. And I know the NFC East. I'm. It's not coming off. <laughs> coming in my head but it doesn't matter it's the eagles right if alex smith plays then the 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 redskins are the redskins are an nfc east title contender along with yes i i, I mean the cowboys are going to make it interesting like they did last season we should they should have beat the eagles to win the division but you know hey they didn't right they now suck. everybody is contendered and uh Allen from Strikeout Beer says, "Watch out, the Giants and Danny Dimes is like this this season." 
Mm, I, he's he's right. I mean, if Danny Dimes can get it going this season, along with Saquon Barkley, they they you know I'm Didn't telling they you, get that, a receiver in the draft too, because like they, I feel like that was they, kind of their missing, did. like their missing aspect was receiver core. They put together a good offensive line. You, you know what the the New York Giants' biggest downfall is is that they got the Dallas Cowboys sloppy sloppy seconds coaching staff. Yeah, I mean Jason Garrett went over there for offensive coordinator, so. That's the only thing that worries me with the Giants. Like, are you going to become predictable, just like the Cowboys were, right? Everybody said, oh, it was uh, it was Linehan. That's why we were predictable. So they got rid of Linehan. Kellen Moore was the offensive coordinator. And then guess what? We were predictable again last season. Maybe not as much as we were with Linehan, but we were still predictable. Hey, first down, you know what we were doing. We were handing the ball to Zeke. Why not on first down do a little fucking play action pass? How about that? Let's mix shit up. But they didn't. Um, but if you guys yeah, were listening to yeah. to that game, Tony Romo was literally calling every play. It's like, oh, they're going to every play. Dump it over every over, play. Over, dump but, it over the middle. <laughs> but but let's be honest, Tony Romo can call almost every. He he does it every single game that he's commentating. Why? Because Tony Romo has an amazing football IQ, which makes him better than Dak Prescott. He had a better arm, better accuracy, everything. So he just didn't have a team around. He never had a defense the whole time he played in Dallas. Right. So, yeah. So, uh, so uh, Jameson saves the day again. He did say Nelson Aguilar was a free agent and went to Vegas to the Raiders. So, uh, welcome to the beginning of your end of career, Nelson Aguilar. Wentz beat y'all, Dre with no names. I'm confused what that is. Um, yeah, I don't know. Game, maybe. Last season, maybe. Um, I think you will. I think you would be excited with Clappy McDermott would be at, with at like at the Giants. This is what you're gonna see <laughs> in the press box when they do the the shot on the offensive coordinators. Doesn't matter what happened. This is what you're gonna see from Jason Garrett. <laughs> yeah, That's Scott. And then uh, uh, Strikeout Beer says, uh, "Little Hannon's awful." Yeah, he is. He's he's awful. And did you know now he's with LSU? Yeah. And and, and <laughs> do you still think LSU is going to go back to back? Where's your brother no, at? No. <laughs> no, LSU is not going to go back to back. They lost. They lost. Uh, they lost a lot on offense. They lost Burrow. They lost Jeffries. They lost a lot on the offense. So no, no. You look for LSU this year. Unfortunately. Uh, LSU will be rebuilding, which is great because they're going to be ranked really high. Going, I think they're ranked like three, and they're playing Texas the second week. Regardless if we have a season coming up in um, September or if we have a season in the spring, they're still playing LSU, and they're rebuilding, and it's going to give Texas a leg up because Texas is going to go into Death Valley and whoop that ass. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this question. If if we do not have a college football season and then LSU wins the twenty one championship game, does does that make them back to back national championships? Even yeah, though they didn't I do mean, it like back to back years. Yeah, it, it still makes them back to back. Gee, like on paper, but technically, I mean, no. It, sh- <laughs> semantics. Come on now, bud. I if if I am going to say it right here. If we do not have a twenty twenty football season. Central Florida claims they're national champions. <laughs> no. Yeah. They uh, Brandon asks, so who's winning since LSU is not in? Ohio um, oh, yeah. Ohio State. Ohio State or Auburn. Or Kansas State. Yeah. Yeah. So. Ooh, Clemson. I, I don't know. It's going to be tough. It's going to be Ohio, Clemson, um, Auburn, and uh, I'm going to go with Georgia. So Those are going to be the teams in the playoffs. Since uh, Strikeout Beer is active in our chat here, they kind of put me on the spot tonight on the like on the, like, on the the show. They said, they said Michael Thomas was a top receiver in the, in the NFL, and I said he isn't in the top five. Name me your top five receivers in the, in the NFL. Ooh, top five receivers in the NFL. I said Tyreek Hill was number one, and no, then I had Julio Jones up there. You're wrong with that number one. Tyreek Hill, he is he is not the most explosive receiver in the in the like in the end the league. No, I'm gonna surprise you with one. Okay. 
DeAndre Hopkins is the best wide receiver in the league. They said he was top one or top two. I I, got, I, I believe they like they said DeAndre Hopkins, forget who they said, like number two, and then it was Michael Thomas was number three. So I've got Hops, Evans, Michael Thomas. Ooh, and then it gets rough after that because there's a lot of mediocre wide receivers. There's mediocre like a, as in they're still good. Mediocre. They're just not like yeah, they're not like themselves from 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 the pack. I forgot all yeah. about Michael Evans. I mean, he's yeah. definitely Mike. Um, yeah, I got Hop. I'll give you my top three: Hops, Evans, and Michael Thomas. Because I think those three wide receivers can go to any team and do exactly what they did for the last team. Yeah, I, I agree with Tony. Um, Hopkins and Thomas. Are, I I don't agree with Tony. Uh, let me retract that statement. I think Hopkins and Evans are 1A and 1B, and then Thomas is number two. We will really see how good or how bad uh, Hopkins is because I think Watson is a top five quarterback in the in the league, and I don't think Kyler Murray is quite there yet. So J- Jameson says his top five receivers are Michael Thomas, John Ray Hopkins, Julio Jones, OBJ, uh, and then Adams. A- yeah, Adams from Green is Green Bay is a good is a good pick. The problem with Odell Beckham Jr. He plays great against the Cowboys. He plays mediocre against everybody else. So I'm kind of kind of worried about that. So guys, thank you for uh, tuning us late here. Uh, we definitely went over with the Mike and Mike Man Hour. But guys, thank you for commenting. Thank you for uh, sharing. Uh, Key Williams, you were a sharer. I saw Dre shared it a few times. Jameson shared it a, a, a few times. You guys have all had 10 entries into the $100 Amazon gift card. Every time you share that, you get 10 more entries. So share it 10 times. That's 100 entries. Once we hit the 500, 500 likes, we will raffle that off here on yeah. air. So Yeah, sure. Guys, if you tuned in late, we really appreciate y'all being here. But – Man, we we love the interaction that we got tonight. We come to the show when it when it starts, so we can continue to have this kind of interaction with you guys. We we would much rather have interaction with you guys than you know try to talk about shit. Yeah, We'd much rather <laughs> talk with you guys. So we are taking tomorrow off. I'm taking my kiddos to the zoo. We will we will be back Sunday night, guys, 10 p.m. East Coast time here on Facebook Live Sunday through Thursday. Mike and Mike Man Hour, guys, we are out. Have a great freaking night. Cheers, fuckers. Bye. Yeah. Get high, rapper. The Man Hour. You already know. It's live. It's raw. It's going down. Like this. I'm going around and letting everybody know that they welcome to the show. Yep. It's the littlest thing you've ever seen, you already know. Let me introduce you to your host of the hour. It be Mike and Mike. Mike and Mike. Yeah, it's the man hour. Yep. Got the hottest plays, uh, all the breaking news. Yeah. Every rumor, every trade, every breaking bruise. Mm-hmm. Tighten up the screws. Yeah, it's going down. Have you saying what the fuck? It never watered down. Woo. It's going down. I'll be rolling up. Yep. And if you buy it or you sell it, then you made the cut. Watch you flip it back. I can double up. I got some rocks for that ass. I'ma burn it up. Gotta check the rules, but know that it be fair and foul. Rap blow the whistle, coach throw the towel. We can do this on the field or outside the lines. It's the man now, though. Now we going live.